So today I'm going to show you one of the simplest ways you can spawn particles with VFX Craft all over your animated character or animated objects. And you can create crazy effects like these ones, for example. You see, it's fairly easy in VFX Craft to spawn particles in a static object like a cube or a sphere. But applying particles to an animated object, it's not that straightforward. But nonetheless, I come up with a simple solution that is quite straightforward and I want to share it with you today. So let's jump right into it and let's see how to spawn particles in a skin and mesh. So let's start from the beginning where I created a project in Universal Render Pipeline using Unity 2020.2. Then in Package Manager I installed VFX Graph. From there I went to Mixamo and got a character and some animations as well. Created the animator controller and here is, I have an animated character or skin and mesh. Besides having a third person controller and scene machine, what matters here is the vampire object, which has the skin and mesh renderer, in other words the object that interacts with the bones of this character. So to spawn particles on its mesh, we can start by creating a visual effect graph I'm gonna name it to particles to animated character and I'm gonna drag and drop it to my TPS player you don't necessarily need to parent this to your character and then I'm going to reset the transform, that's important I'm just gonna push this over here and add another ground, just like this So let's open up VFX Graph by pressing the edit button Basically we want to focus our attention in initialize particle because it's here where we tell the particles basically to spawn in this or in that position. If we press spacebar and type set position, you will notice that we have a lot of shapes and a lot of blocks. We got a box, we got a circle, we got a cone, we got a line, sphere, etc. And then we got this one which is the mesh one. That's the one we want. Probably in more recent versions we will get a skin and mesh. But for this method let's use the mesh the shape mesh and you can disable the set velocity for now you may not notice but the particles are spawned in a capsule shape let's increase the capacity to 100,000 for example and the constant spawn rate to 1000 let's just change the aspect of the particle by clicking on the main texture and selecting the default particle we can change the blend mode to additive so they become brighter now let's control their size with a set size and we can disable the set size over life for now. And as you can see they are spawning in the vertex of the capsule. Like I said it's easy to spawn in a static mesh shape. We could fit it whichever mesh we want as long as it isn't a skidded mesh. So how are we going to do this? Well first up here the set position can receive a mesh. So we can create a property, a mesh property rename it to mesh simply and then connect it to the set position we are doing this because now in the inspector if we select the VFX graph as you can see in the properties we can assign any mesh we want and we are going to use this to feed it the skin and mesh but first we need just a few lines of code so let's create a script I'm gonna call it skin and mesh to mesh and I'm gonna assign this to the TPS player once again, you don't necessarily need to assign this to your character. But for organization's sake, let's keep it that way. And now, if we open this up, the first thing we need is to know which skin and mesh we want to spawn particles in. So we say public skin and mesh renderer. We can call it skin and mesh. And then we want to know which VFX graph are we going to use. So we can say public visual effect. And now we need to import the library. We are going to say using unity engine.vfx. And you can call this variable vfx graph. Then lastly, we need a refresh rate, basically a float. You can set a default value of 0 0.02. I forgot it, but you can set. Now, what we are going to do is down here in the start, we are going to call a start coroutine. We are going to use an I enumerator, which we are going to call update vfx graph just like this so down here you can say i enumerator update vfx graph in this coroutine 
we want to do something while, for example, this object is active. Active self. We are going to do something and then we are going to wait a very small amount of time so we don't crash Unity. We are going to say yell return new wait for seconds open brackets refresh rate. And those few lines of code that we need are as follow. First, we need to create a mesh. We can call it m equal new mesh. And then we need to go to the skinned mesh render and bake mesh to the new mesh we just created. Bake mesh is basically taking a snapshot of the current mesh position of their vertices. And now we can assign this new mesh to VFX graph by saying VFX graph dot set mesh open brackets and now we need to say the name of the property which is mesh and then assign m which is the new mesh and make sure that the name of the property in VFX graph matches this one this property right here the mesh one they must have the same name otherwise the script will not find it now save the script and let's first assign the skin and mesh, in this case, the vampire. If you click here, you will notice that's the only skin and mesh in this scene. We can also click here and assign the only VFX graph we have in the scene, which is the particles to animate the character. And then refresh rate, like I said, it's 0 0.02. Can be a little bit less, can be a bit more. For example, if you set this to 1, you are basically saying each second bake a new mesh from the skin and mesh. Ok, let's test this out. I'm gonna press play and as you can see, there's a few problems. Well, first, you need to make sure the scale of the parent of the skin and mesh must be 1, 1, 1. Let's take care of a few things, like for the color, for example. Let's add a color property. I'm gonna choose an orange, something like this, increase the alpha and increase the intensity to 5, which is a little bit too much, probably. Quick side note, I'm just going to increase the bloom a little bit. And then in the output particle quad, we can use a set color. Above the set color of our life. And then we can assign the color. And nothing happens because the set color of our life is overwriting any previous value. We need to set the composition to multiply. Okay, I'm just going to adjust a little bit the color. So they become orange, so we can see them a little bit better. And maybe decrease the size to 0 0.03. Okay. We got a few dots, a few particles. Maybe we can increase the rate a little bit more. Okay, that's better. Just like this. Now if I play this again, now we can see that it has particles in the head, in the arms, in the body, in the legs. But then there's this big sphere and planes down here, which sincerely I don't know why this happened. But I found out a very simple fix. If we go back to the script, you will notice that this mesh, this M variable, we can have access to their vertices. It's an array of all of the vertices inside the mesh. So what we can do is create a vector tree, an array of vectors tree, call it vertices, and assign all of the vertices from the M, the new mesh we created. And with this vertices, we are going to create a new mesh. We can say mesh m2, for example, equals new mesh. And now we can say that the vertices of this mesh are going to be equal to the vertices of the other mesh. Just don't forget to assign this m2 mesh to the VFX graph down here. And it may seem like we are doing anything, but first we bake the mesh from the skinned mesh, then we save it all of the vertices to a vector tree array. And we created a new mesh with all of these vertices. And assigned that new second mesh to VFX graph. And if you save this, and if you test it out, now it may seem like we haven't done anything, but as you can see, VFX graph is spawning all of the particles exactly in the vertices of this character. And look just how awesome it is. If I shoot a projectile, if I play an animation, the particles will follow that animation. And it's pretty cool. I have also decreased the lifetime to 0 0.3 and 0 0.4, by the way. And as you can see, if I walk around, <laughs> I know this is too big, the particles are falling exactly the animation of this 
character of the skinned mesh. And that's really awesome. Now you may ask, well, how can I leave particles behind, by the way? First thing you need to do in the VFX graph, as you can see if we move this around, there's no particles being left behind. That's because this is set to local. If you click here, we are switching this to world position. But all of the particles go to the zero position, which is the origin of this world. So first we need to set a new position after the set position mesh. And we can say, yeah, you are going to be in the position of the target. And the target is the VFX graph in the scene, is this transform. You are going to be in this position. And if you connect like this, well, nothing happens. And that makes sense, because we are overwriting any previous position value. So what we also need is to add the previous position. Current position, which in other words is the set position mesh. If we add this to the target position, and then connect to the set position. Now, yeah, it's still in world position 00. zero. Why? Because the set position block is also set to world, so what we need is to click here and set it to local. We see this L letter, which means local. Now, as soon as we do it, now as you can see, it goes back to its target position, and if we move it around, we are leaving particles behind. And if we quickly test this out with our character, we have indeed some particles being left behind. And it looks awesome. As simple as it may seem, with this technique you can do so many things. By the way, you can turn on this set size of our life, use this curve, and set the composition to multiply, and now it will look a little bit better. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. It's an awesome technique that I think I'm going to use in my next video. So stay tuned and I hope you have enjoyed. If you want to support me, you can do it on my Patreon page. You will also get access to a tremendous amount of visual effects that you can use in your games. And a big thank you goes to all of the patrons. And as usual, a special shout out for the top tier patrons, which are Alak Frost, Bradford Arbent, Curtis Henry, Dan Kruger, David Crew, Goblin Black, Hostile Mars Game, Josh McCormick, Jules Klein, Luis Peloso, Mikhail, Oitsk, Playing Sack Boy, Swerving Tree, and Tirita. Special thank you goes to you. To everyone who watched this, I hope you have enjoyed, and I really hope to see you in my next video. Thanks for watching, bye bye.